Hello there, I'm Kim Berry, editor of Food and Drink Business. Welcome to Play, our weekly news roundup brought to you by GS1 Australia, the only authorised source for your barcodes. For 50 years, GS1 standards have powered business to trade seamlessly, efficiently and safely. You can learn more about the next generation of barcodes at gs1au.org. In the news this week, Regenerative Food and Ag Company Wide Open Agriculture has had a big week. It announced it signed a non-binding Memorandum of Understanding with Saputo Dairy to use Saputo's manufacturing site to produce commercial quantities of its lupin protein product, Buntine Protein. The MOU will provide the framework for the pair to then negotiate a definitive agreement on the production. Wide Open Ag's Buntine Protein comes from lupins, which up until recently have mainly been used for animal feedstock, but also as a regenerative crop as it puts nitrogen back into the soil. Fun fact, Western Australia, where the company's based, produces between 60 to 80% of global production. Now, it has a low carbon footprint, its eco-credentials for, are for soil health, and Wide Open Ag has developed a novel technology with Curtin University that overcomes some of the crop's barriers to its use in the food sector up until now. That sort of relates to taste, texture, but also its ability to gel or thicken. And the result has been Buntine Protein, which has a higher protein concentration than any other plant-based protein. It's low fat and non-GMO. The company has said that if the entire lupin crop of WA was converted into Buntine Protein, it would be worth upwards of $1 billion a of in sales a year. Last year it opened a pilot plant for Buntine's production and signed a supply agreement with Mond Nissan Australia for its new product development in plant-based foods and beverages. Since then, it's developed a range of applications in milk, biscuits, uh, noodles, vegan cheese, and all have been well received in the market, particularly the vegan cheese, uh, because of its higher protein concentration than, than other vegan cheeses. It's got a wonderful mouthfeel, they say, and it uses an authentic fermentation process. It's also signed distribution agreements in APAC in the US, and then, after its Saputo announcement, it announced that it had acquired European lupin protein producer, ProLupin, for $4.2 million. Now that gives the company immediate commercial scale manufacturing capabilities, which could expected to produce about 1,000 tonnes a year. So the company's going to launch a capital raise to fund that purchase. See? Big week. Uh, Tempo Group has bought Nourish Foods, which went into voluntary administration last month. Tempo is actually mainly known as a global supplier of consumer and electrical goods, but it does have a small food and beverage portfolio. In 2021, it acquired the seafood brands Brunswick Sardines and Paramount Salmon from Freedom, Freedom Foods Group, which is now known as Numi, for around $3 million. Food rescue company Second Bite has appointed Daniel Moorfield as CEO. He was the APAC president for McCormick and prior to that, the CFO for SPC Admona when it was owned by Coca-Cola Amatol. Woolies announced last week it was releasing 150 new or reformulated bakery items. Now, bakery items are one of my five food groups, so I very much was go on. It's a lovely story of what goes into such an undertaking. So have a read and then spend a moment imagining life on the tasting team, which had to taste every single iteration of every single product. I have asked them to save me a seat at the table for the next time. Now, the National Association of Women in Operations, NAWO, has launched an expansion in Victoria of its national flagship mentoring program. With funding from the Victorian Office of Women uh, as part of the state government's strategy to encourage more women into manufacturing, NAWO is offering sponsored places for women working in manufacturing and energy sectors into the program. The mentoring program has been running for 10 years and has mentored more than 750 women. It's an amazing organisation. South by Southwest Sydney kicks off on Sunday and I am extremely excited to announce I will be hosting a session on the innovation stage next Wednesday with V2 Food and Nourish Ingredients. Think ready, steady, cook, but less lame. 
The program for the eight day event is bonkers. And if you're in Sydney, absolutely worth it. If for nothing else, to see me on stage, again, with a microphone, again, talking about the future of food, again. I think that'll do for this week. <laughs> for all these stories and more, please head to the website, foodanddrinkbusiness.com.au. Our thanks to uh, GS1. Please don't forget to subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends. It's uh, entertaining if nothing else. <laughs> and with that, I'm Kim Berry, over and out.